the choices where you make in life, and you have to learn to live with it. So I'm all them talk to with them, because you have to know when to be a friend and when to be a father. That moment when you found out that you're going to be a father, that very first child, what did you feel in that moment? If you can remember. I remember everything like it was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. So my kids, them, have two and one biological. Mm -hmm. Right? So I have twins, boy and girl. Mm -hmm. And um, 1996, when I got my baby mother impregnated, and they said I was going to have a twin. Two for one deal. I said, I do this, but still never believe. Like, me I said, I want to do people in life. <laughs> you know, them not there. I'm going to get twin, but I still yeah. never, you know, mm -hmm. return, never come to me like, even it was a Thursday night she went down to have baby, you know. Yeah. So it's like I was sleeping and she wake up and she said, Rich. Time no. Out of my sleep. I'm saying, what do you mean? Ready for I know you jump up out of your sleep and she said, she feel like she won't go to the bathroom, she won't use the bathroom. And she said, no, use the bathroom, don't have to Take a taxi and she reached them, and you know. I couldn't go in with that. Yes. So what I did was, you know. She had one seven p.m. Mm -hmm. and she was a problem to have my son. She had my daughter first. Okay, so, so Missy to... was born first. Right. So they had to put her to sleep. Mm -hmm. Because them say my son was coming before the Edward burst. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, so she they had, had to put her to sleep and induce labor for right. your son. Right. Okay. So now the next morning, no Friday morning, no. When I reach down to the hospital, no. And she said, Richie twin. When me look, me say two look or something, I told red look or shimmies. Them thing that they have some little vest with them call it shimmies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and the youth, them in that too. And me, I said, look for me. <laughs> you know? And she said, look, look. I said, no. What do we provide? You know? And it bring, it's like, it, it bring a joy to me and push a drive in me. Mm -hmm. Where it, it, because I say, you know, when you come from the garrison, they used to say a lot of things with you, them a big five dollar and ten dollar. Nose not a run a nose and all of them things. Mm -hmm. So I tell myself, say, my you, them not do that. Right, right. See? My you, them not come back no five dollar and, and, and a ten dollar business. You see? So, I work hard because them tell me I work at National Bakery. I push bread up until I favor bread. <laughs> you understand? I work on the chuck. I work in the bin. I wash vehicle, like wash the bread van them. Mm -hmm. Like I put in some extra work and I spend the best in the youth them. So it was a joy. Up to today, it's still a joy. It's like me talking about it now. It's like it brings back some nice memories, you know? Yes, yes. When she tell me it's a two heartbeat and all of them something, I still not taking that, that say yo a twin mega get I when me really see them mm -hmm. me say a twin me get for two yeah <laughs> so I like pre pre preparation I was prepared responsibility with no responsibility I come and we have to do what we have to do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I that me do your job at the national bakery you had now two children this was 1996 how did you juggle that you know, fatherhood, your nine to five fatherhood, and of course, you wanting to get into music. How did you balance all of that? Remember, now as a young youth, you can't take on the world because you done. I I, I don't put in my mind say I can do everything possible to take care of my youth. Mm -hmm. I was working at the bakery, plus I was on a little sound. So I was looking mm -hmm. the break from the little sound, but I still never leave the nine to five because I never had the name yet on the little sound. You understand? So it's like, um, oh, I manage that. Them young, them time there and them mother was there when I come, when I like in the night, because you know, sometimes you have to work till later national. Mm -hmm. You go, it was a shift. 
So if you go 12 in the afternoon, you come off 10 in the night and you go back six in the morning. Mm -hmm. so I, could have do, I could have done that. So the time, I, I had time to spend with them. Go home 10 and I could have stayed up and feed them and gone back. Because it's two kids, you know. So yeah. when she have one of feed one of breast, me have a buckle and I feed the next one. Yeah. And then eat enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, so one time when I used to call the infamil pan them, the feeding them with name infamil. Mm -hmm. I have about 50 of them one at a time. So, so, from, so from that stage then, you weren't just thinking about providing for them financially. You were very hands-on in your approach as a father. Even right now, hands-on from day one. Only thing I don't do is come here because I couldn't come here. <laughs> but I do everything else. I couldn't come here and find twist it and go on and shiny bump and go on with all of them something there. Mm -hmm. But everything is me right there. Everything from clinic. What else you say? I was clinic there. And I was going to clinic. Yeah. Remember that time. Most father never used to go to a clinic. Yeah. When I went to the clinic, like when they was like six weeks, when I got six week clinic. And I went to six week clinic. I was like the only father there. Yeah. Too quick. <laughs> Because remember, we also got comprehensive clinic in Slide Road, see? Mm -hmm. And they never get number one yet. I go early because we wake up early and say I can get number. Because I you know, like not Andrews and them big hospital where I go, where I got a clinic now we hear Yeah. So we go back to the open road, I will get number two, number three, number four, number five. Never get number one yet. Mm -hmm. So when them go some my nurse come, your daddy and nurse start come like all 8 o'clock and them something there. Them say a father, them say, yes man, it's nice to see fathers in here. Yeah. But no one if a father in nobody there. I was the only father and 30 baby mother. Yeah. So that made you so, feel so that made you feel good in yourself to know that you were, you know, taking on that that a role that was different than in, in that time because fathers were known for being absent. Definitely up to today the fathers are still known for being absent. But in them times it was a joy to see how the people them cheer me on. Mm -hmm. to see as a young father come with him baby mother. And they are clinic and you know, I play, I do the role and I see the things that the woman them go through. Mm -hmm. Because one of the worst things, and even children hospital, I sleep at children hospital, I go yeah. through every part of parenting. Anybody who have a child and has been to the children hospital, when time, them say the child have a fever or anything, and them say you have a sauce or dung and get salt water and tell you to get this child and say sauce or with this, you have a drink ginger. Mm -hmm. she be dehydrated, you know? All of them things that we go through, when they look for your child, vein for, for, for your child, a child, a, a vaccination. Mm -hmm. and, and them stick the child, all of them things that the child happy until she get the injection. No parents mm -hmm. are one of the worst feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Happy until she get the injection. She ball all day, all night. Murder, boy. <laughs> so, Richie, what made you want to be um, this type of father? What made you want to be different from, you know, what you saw happening around you? All right. You know, sir, I come from a garrison, right? And come from a garrison, any household don't have any father. Many household have a mother. Many household, the children, them grow mm -hmm. two different era. Right? Mm -hmm. When I say two different era, meaning the father lived down the road and the mother lived down the road. So like the them are growing at two different years. Yeah. Two so different me, me never wonder. Right, because you were deal with discipline and over there, so the mother deal with no discipline. It's whatever goes. So I never wonder. I want their own my youth them and I want to watch them grow. Because I never have my father around. Right, right. In them times. You know, I never have my father around. So I wanted to be there for everything. I was there at every stage, every stage of my youth them life. Every stage. So not having your father around, that propelled you, that pushed you to want to be the father that you never had. All right. When I say my, my father was not around, it was not his fault. I was wicked people tell like my father. You understand? <laughs> so my father was a man who always in my life, but he wasn't there physically. Mm, mm -hmm. You understand? He was there verbally. He wasn't there physically. And I had my grandfather and I had my grandmother. So 
you know, a lot of people them say them grow up on survival. I love grow me. So I want to grow my youth the same way there. Because mm -hmm. I have great grand, I have grandmother, I have mother, I have uncle. So the way there, I did want to deal with my youth them. Make so them physically, so, so physically you wanted to be there since your father wasn't yeah, able to be there for you physically. Everything you just wanted to watch them first, this them first, that them first step. There are different ways that you grow a boy and different ways that you grow a girl. Some of the lessons that you 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 teach to a boy, you will teach it to a girl in different ways. You know, how did you level that out as a father? All right. I started to do the leveling business when them start reach nine. Mm -hmm. And I go in a puberty age. Because as now, you have to show your son them of rough. Mm -hmm. You have to show your daughter so she has a tough mentally. Mm -hmm. So the difference is how you talk to your son about girls. Because remember, you know, a father don't want to hear the same daughter of a boyfriend, but him feel good when he hears the same son of a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So this is where you have to balance. You have to sit down on your whole conversation because guess what? You're you gonna be biased. You know, why your daughter have a girlfriend, she have, she have boyfriend, she have, have boyfriend. So what I do, I sit down with them and I read with them and I tell them the first thing you have to remember. You know, you have a girlfriend, but remember, so that is not the most important thing. So these art to art talk, I try to have with them separately. You don't have these conversations with them in the same place. So I used to have this conversation, even to the day, I still have these conversations with them because I tell them say, certain decisions that they're going to make in life, but them have to learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. The consequence, the choices where you make in life, you have to learn to live with it. So I hold them tighter with them because you have to know when to be a friend and when to be a father. Right, right. So the, the separation, I know when they want because if they want to talk to me and them say, Yo, you know, say this about me and that about me, no, I can't be father, I turn friend. Mm -hmm. And when them come and say, Daddy, wait, wait, me just say, all right. Me I tell you what me think. Can I remember say you have to know when them want you listen or when them need advice. So you had some experience with the twins, but um, you know, when Peely was born, let's talk about that moment. They have they have two different mothers, right? All right, listen to this again now, as I tell people. Peely is my biological dad. Mm -hmm. Say that called Peely, my adopted daughter. Mm -hmm. Right? Peely is not my, my real daughter. Okay, okay. I've been raising Peely from Peely was like three years old. Okay. Right? So, I didn't... Like, the experience that I have with Peely is like I was the same experience that I have with the eldest then. But... Feel it just coming at a time when, you know, like I need some more humbleness. Feel it come humble me yeah. and bring some great joy to me. Like the things them we should do, like the things, oh, she sound because it's like Peely band for time. <laughs> Zane, so everything with Peely do, like we had phone now, could have video. Yeah. So that's why I see my post back some of the video when, when with Peely I go out with something because when every time like me I go through something, I just watch it because Peely it bring a joy. She bring a joy to me when just watching her, you just know, say, I love she need an attention. Because you are that exemplary father, you already give yourself like the gift because you're taking care of your children. You already give yourself. And them are my gift, man. So I'm going to look up on it as an, an, as an, 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 an accomplishment because getting gifts for, for, for Father's Day, yes, it is nice. Mm. Nice to get gifts, but knowing that people appreciate you is even better than the gift itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The appreciation is bigger than the gift. That's how I look at it. What is your favorite Father's Day memory, if you have any? Every day is a Father's Day for me. It's not the day itself. Every day is because, remember, I take my kids to work on a daily, you know. Mm -hmm. So my dad are right too. And the joy, if it knows to the youth, them pass the worst. A big thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Understand? It's a big thing for me if you know, say, yo, me carry my data, I got work. See, Peely just call me and see Missy does a message me. I come ask me if I'm really like, so she feel like she anything about you. <laughs> Already is done. <laughs>
Um, so, so people are seeing the, the, the relationship that you guys have on social media because, of course, you put these little videos out there and people applaud you for being the father that you are. When you mm -hmm. see these messages and you hear people say, boy, Richie, I love all you do with your youth, them. how that make you feel? It make me feel very proud because there's a stigma out there that is Jamaican man is deadbeat and you're not a good father left and you understand? But everybody's experience is different mm -hmm. because they don't celebrate Father's Day like how they celebrate Mother's Day, you know, because there's the big stigma that's out there that Jamaican father, them have this and father, and because, you know, most time in the era you talk, they don't really talk about the father, they talk about their mother. Mm -hmm. Big up my mother, big up my mother, you know, any accolades where them get them big up their mother and thing. So me, I one of them good father there for 99% bad, me and the 1% good. Advice for Father's Day, for fathers, especially absentee fathers, what advice would you want to give them about, you know, being there for their children, making sure that they be there for their kids? All right. I tell you about responsibility a while ago. Most of these men running from responsibility while some of them stay far because of the mother. So there's a difference. So the advice what, what I would have, I want to give it to mothers also. Don't let the cause of your dirty mentality and your ego, you make the father do and come around the child. Don't mash up your child's happiness and make the child hate his father for something that the father done to you. Don't deprive the child of his father. And fathers, don't make because you're the mother of a falling out. You turn your mind from the child. You have to deal with the child. You have to just try to do something. You want to work together. You understand? Pull together for the child. You're not together anymore. Do it for the child. The child is there and it's a replica of you and the mother. So what you have to do? You want to have to do the right thing for the child. Put egos aside. Don't make ego. Make you say, oh, my neighbor, I've got a youth the school. I'm in a responsive school for you, MP. I'm in a business if rare, you know, because a woman did not get a dollar from me. She not spend my money, you know, rare, rare, this. You understand? So that's the ego we have to put to the side. So we have to put that to the side and be there for the youth because the youth need fathers. The youth, them need them father. The father, the male specimen in the life of a youth is a big, important thing because they need guidance. Mm -hmm. You have to guide them. The more somebody to talk to you, you can make them go talk to the whole world. The whole Jamaica, you can make them call down, you can make them put them problem on the internet. When they have a father and can't talk to them father, know when to be a child friend and know when to be a child parent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at that, you can tell them to you know, you see. All right, so for the fathers out there who are present in their children's lives, you know, are doing what they're supposed to do in terms of living up to their responsibility, um, what message would you want to send to them on Father's Day? Big up yourself because you are a real father. Never let your son and go neglect your daughter. You take care of your responsibility. Never regret your bikini. Ambalo, big up every real father. You're for proud. 